Sega. When I was thinking about what people remember fondly about the game, at the time, I think it was enjoying the thrills and getting the timing right when they played it. I think enjoying the game world and experiencing the fantasy world of Disney were a big part of it, too. What they'll see in the 2013 version will be nothing like the old game in some sense, but I'm hoping that players can relive the same emotions when they play it. It's taking something that was very iconic in the 16-bit era and thinking, well, how can we take something that was really special, really worked well, was one of the most iconic games of its time, and actually try and explore that in new ways with the technology. And we have to be very mindful of um, what made the original so successful and why people loved it, and, uh, and, and try and bring that forward without it being just, you know, literally a one-for-one -one remake. There were a lot of unique games at the time in terms of graphics or the general atmosphere of the game. Even among those, this game made an impression that still lasts, and now it's being remade. The fact that we're bringing back something nostalgic that people remember fondly as a game they enjoyed years ago, to me, is the epitome of Disney. The original game, it just had a lot going for it. I think even the name Castle of Illusion was something cool. You know, straight away, Castle of Illusion says, oh, what's that? Oh, what's inside that castle? And then you've got Mickey Mouse, biggest character in the world. So straight away, you're like, oh, that's awesome. We're going to play Mickey Mouse through this Castle of Illusion. And it innovated on all levels, camera, control, platforming. And I think the core gamers absolutely loved it. So that in essence, it's a very simple platformer, but it grabs the magic of Disney, the magic of Mickey. It was my first time making a game, so I came up with ideas I thought might be interesting and things I thought would help flesh out the fantasy world without being hesitant about how difficult or unconventional they might be. In that sense, I think that helped us make a unique game. First, the animation was unique in that it used a remarkable number of frames in the animation for its time. We tried to use as many techniques from film animation as we could. Also, we put a lot of energy into the backgrounds for its time, packing in as much as we could given the memory constraints. I think both efforts paid off in terms of the game's graphic quality. A Disney animation is always moving, from beginning to end. At the time we were making our game, if you didn't do something on the controller, nothing would move at all. So we thought, if we want to bring Disney animations to life, we need things moving on the screen all the time. These days you see it in almost all games, but at the time, we were one of the first games where your character would move even when you're not doing anything. The amount of memory or VRAM that we had to work with at the time was really tiny. You need memory to make good, rich animations. But the way VRAM had been used prior to that point wasn't very well suited for animations like that. So we worked with the programmers to rebuild the system from the ground up to let us focus more on the animations. Once we got the animations where we wanted them, we adjusted the character's movements pixel by pixel for a better feel when the player controls him. When we were told to make a Mickey Mouse game, I didn't want to make a game that was just about Mickey being cute. Our focus was on how we could include the Disney world view from their classic movies. So rather than Mickey Mouse alone, we drew inspiration from the various classic movies that Disney's produced. Games at the time were 8-bit or 16-bit, so there wasn't really a lot of room to work with. Most people in the industry weren't putting a lot of work into graphics or creating animations that conveyed a lot of character emotion. When we watched Disney movies and Mickey, it seemed like such a waste to take the fluid animations and beautiful backgrounds and turn them into pixelated graphics. So I think we put a lot more work into the graphics than any other title at the time. When we were making the Dragon Balls for the candy stage, we couldn't figure out what to use for the dragon's body. Someone from Sega's US office sent us some licorice as a suggestion. Most of the team hated it, but I couldn't stop eating it. I was holding one of the hollow ones in my mouth and breathing through it like a straw as I worked and ended up filling the whole room with the smell. When we were working on this game, I was focused on animations and recreating the world of Disney. And now, modern technology can deliver Disney visuals directly and cinematically rather than via blocky